Hello and welcome to Books of Blood. Welcome my fellow booktubers. My name is John. Alright, so before I begin this video, I'm going to have to kind of do what is known as a disclaimer, uh, trigger warning thing, or whatever you want to call it, whatever whatever's called nowadays. Alright, so as you notice by this uh, title on the thumbnail, this is going to be 10 Erotic Horror Book Recommendations. Okay, so when I am reading the synopsis for these books, some of them, I'm not saying all of them, but some of them are pretty raunchy, pretty dirty, and I don't plan on editing that. I'm going to read it the way it says. So if you're somebody that gets easily offended or offended by sexual stuff, because there is some sexual stuff on here, uh, then this might not be the video for you. If it is, then welcome to the channel and welcome to this video. Alright, so how did I decide to do erotic horror book recommendations? Uh, so the other day, uh, E.D. Lewis was doing a video. It was like, a, I think it was his wrap-up video. It's the one where he referred to my uh, series uh, 50, um, 50 Years of Horror Fiction as 50 Shades of Horror Fiction, all right? Which has inspired me, you know, because I told him, I said, I'm going to do, uh, my next one's going to be 50 Shades Darker and then 50 Shades Freed, you know, of horror fiction. <clears throat> anyway... He mentioned about erotic horror, and he said he didn't know if there's any uh, recommendations out there or anything. And I'm sure there are, but I said, you know what? I am going to do an erotic horror book recommendation. So, I went on the internet, I just typed in erotic horror books, and came up with several recommendations. And you know what? I don't know. I'm not as familiar. I, I, I read. I do read erotic horror. I read the Hot Blood series. Um, I read some of the uh, one of the books I believe that I mentioned here. Um, so, but I haven't read a ton of it. All right. So this is kind of a learning experience for me too. And you know, like I said, I'm not an expert. You know, basically what I did was, you know, I looked and I read the synopsis. I, oh, that that sounds good, or that sounds kinky, or that sounds naughty, or whatever. So that's kind of how, how I find the recommendations. Some of them are what I would consider, like if, you, like if you're going to say, some of them are like soft core erotic horror, and then some of them are just like downright. <laughs> all right. So, and I'm all prepared for this. I, you guys can't see it, but um, I've got my Sex Panther shirt on from Anchorman. 60% of the time, it works all the time. All right. Anyway, and uh, I'm not wearing pants. No, I'm kidding. I am. I'm kidding. I'm not. I'm kidding about that. Don't, you know, um, yeah, I hear YouTube now going, oh, we're going to demonetize this motherfucker. Yeah, well, I'm not monetized anyway, for, so screw you, YouTube. Anyway, let's get on with this. I won't quit fooling around. Let's get on with this here. All right. First one we got is a, an anthology. This is Cthulhu Rotica, edited by Carrie Quinn. And this says it's the revised edition from independent publisher Dagon Books, Cthulhu Erotica is an exciting new anthology of erotic horror inspired by the writing of H.P. Lovecraft. This decadent collection contains unique creations of mythos fiction plus thought-provoking academic essays. In addition, the revised edition contains more than 20 pieces of original art. With work by Cody Goodfellow, Kenneth Hyde, Stephen J. Searcy, Sylvia Moreno-Garcia, Gabrielle Harboe, Matthew Maravich, Kristen Brown, Richard Barron, a whole bunch of people, and many more. So that is the first one. That is Cthulhu Erotica. It is an anthology inspired, an erotic horror anthology inspired by the works of Lovecraft. So let's move on, all right? <clears throat> and I did try my best not to talk about books that I've already talked about a little too much. I think I may have a couple on here that I have already. All right, so the next one we got is The Skullamance, and this is by R. Lee Smith. <clears throat> For centuries, there has been a legend of a hidden school where magic is taught by the demons who dwell there to anyone who seeks them out, but they ask a terrible price. Anyone who searches, or re, who reaches the door of the Skullamance may enter, but the devil takes every tenth student who tries to leave. A hidden school, demonic masters, and an inescapable fate for one out of every ten graduates. But Connie would do anything to have the magic her best friend was born with. 
and Mara would do anything to get Connie back, all right? So that's pretty pretty tame synopsis, and that is for The Skullamance, and that's by, uh, who did I say that by? Arlie Smith, all right? Alright, so now this one is going to get a little bit raunchy here, and also it does get a little bit um, sacrilegious, if you want to say. So if, if you're somebody that does get offended by that also, then you, know, you might not want to listen to this, fast forward or whatever. Uh, and also, even though I'm going to read this, uh, it doesn't necessarily reflect my views either. So anyway... First, third one we got is The Book of a Thousand Sins by Rath James White. And he is known for some extreme horror, alright? Alright. God's a mean bastard and doesn't give a shit about you. Welcome to a world of zombie nymphomaniacs, psychopathic deities, voodoo surgery, and murderous priests. A place where the gate to heaven is in an elderly whore's pussy and shit-covered sewer drains lead to hell. Where mutilation sex clubs are in vogue and torture machines are sex toys. This is the mind of Wrath James White. No one makes it out alive, not even God himself. The Book of a Thousand Sins collects 15 anti-faith tales of depravity, gore, and sex from the celebrated master of hardcore horror. Be warned, Wrath James White is here to scar you. Alright, so that is The Book of a Thousand Sins by Wrath James White. Alright, number four. We got The Safety of Unknown Cities by Lucy Taylor. Obsession runs through the pages of Taylor's Stoker Award-winning novel. Sex-addicted heroine Val searches the world for fulfillment but seems unable to find it. When she hears about the city where you can experience every, every pleasure and perversion beyond imagining, she embarks on a quest to locate it. Unbeknownst to her, however, a former lover stalks her steps. The kicker? He's a serial killer. That is the safety of unknown cities. Okay. All right, number five, and even the Mothman is not safe within the confines of this video. From Raven West, we have got the coming of the Mothman, and you can kind of do the double entendre for the uh, for the word coming if you wish because that's exactly how it's intended I do believe all right for the last two months a small town along the Ohio River has been troubled by strange occurrences and sightings witnesses report mysterious lights moving across the sky bizarre people in black and a mysterious winged creature the press has dubbed the Mothman but when famed paranormal researcher Joan Klein comes to town to investigate, she discovers more than fear is gripping the community. People who encounter the beast find themselves changed afterward, freed of inhibition and filled with powerful longing. Soon, Joan finds herself not merely investigating, but becoming an integral part of these eerie and erotic events. And that is The Coming of the Mothman, Raven West. Okay, moving right along, number six, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, uh, we have Suzerain, or Suzerain, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, and it's by Adrian John Smith, now this one's kind of a long synopsis, I'll try to get through as quick as I can. What would you do to secure the house of your dreams? Would you kill for it? Would you return from the dead for it? Blackwood House is a 19th century Gothic pile overlooking Charlemagne Mount Harbor, South, South Devon. It is a house where bad things happen. Maura Costigan, a sexy, gutsy, manipulative American writer, is the current owner of the house. But Maura is not what she seems, because Maura is possessed by the spirit of a wandering musician called Martha, who, in her original incarnation, committed a brutal murder in Blackwood House, a property which she tried and failed to wrest from its rightful mistress and claim as her own. And now Martha, in her guise as Maura Costigan, 
is back for another attempt to achieve her all-consuming ambition of owning Blackwood House. And Martha has a plan. It is a plan which embroils Karen Moore, a young, attractive ac academic with her own demons to conquer, and her lover, Susie, deep within its deep machinations. A plan which drives Moira's war veteran husband Frank to suicide, and a plan which brings murder and madness to the small town of Charlemouth. Not for the faint-hearted, Suzerain is a modern gothic novel of considerable power, drawing on elements of the traditional ghost story infused with postmodern sensibility. It is an intelligent literary journey through a landscape of sex, drugs, booze, betrayal, horror, murder, torture, and suicide, set against the folly of the Bush Blair intervention in Iraq. It also serves as, as an unforgettable common documentary and commentary of its time. And that is Suzerain, and that is by Adrian John Smith. All right. And I know reading some of these synopsis, I know some of them don't exactly sound like erotic horror. I guess they have to be kind of tame with them when they do, because uh, they're going to be advertising these on like uh, Amazon, um, places like that, and I'm sure they get kind of shaky when it comes to the the sexy talk or whatever. All right. All right, number seven. Now, this one was published and or written in 1928. All right, and this is the is story of the eye, and this is by Georges Bataille or Bataille. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Only Georges Bataille could write of an eyeball removed from a corpse that the caress of the eye over the skin is so utterly, so extraordinarily gentle, and the sensation is so bizarre that it has something of a rooster's horrible crowing. Batayal has been called a metaphysician of evil, specializing in blasphemy, profanation, and horror. Story of the Eye, written in 1928, is his best-known work. It is unashamedly surrealistic, both disgusting and fascinating, and packed with seemingly endless violations, is something of an underground classic, rediscovered by each new generation. Most recently, the Icelandic pop singer, and I ain't gonna try to pronounce her last name, but the Icelandic pop singer Björk cites Story of the Eye as a major inspiration. She made a music video that alludes to Batal's erotic uses of eggs, and she plans to read an excerpt for an album. Warning, Story of the Eye is, in, is graphically sexual and is only for adults who are not easily offended. All right, and that is Story of the Eye by Georges Bataille. Again, I ain't sure if I'm pronouncing his name right. I'm just doing my best. All right, number eight. Number eight, we have got Chainsaw Alice in Wonderland. This is by Kurt Cave. That's K-H-U-R-T-K-H-A-V-E, in case anybody wants to look it up. And I think his name's on the book cover anyway. The sickest steampunk horror book ever written. It's like Lewis Carroll, H.P. Lovecraft, Jules Verne, Walt Disney, and the Marquis decide through an orgy and murder party, and you're invited. The best written trash you will ever read, exactly what it sounds like, and much worse than you think. You will be ashamed for loving it. It's tentacular. Try the insanity. It's delicious. Out of space, out of time, out of control. The book contains over 100 illustrations, pictures, and graphics. All images are SFW. That means safe for work. It's just the story that is morally reprehensible. All the sex and violence that was missing from the original Alice in Wonderland is now here. Alice the Chrononaut falls down an unmarked dimensional rift or rabbit hole, which transports her to the wondrous lands as imagined by author Lewis Carroll. But this is a very real place, as any parallel reality that can be thought of can be created. Wonderland is being tore apart, torn apart by warring kingdoms, cruel monarchs, cosmic corporations, odd gods, and the forces of Cthulhu. Characters from both Alice's adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass and What Alice Found There are joined by a cast of Disney-like talking animals 
as well as fantastical creatures such as mermaids, fairies, trolls, and minotaurs. And then the fighting and fornicating ensues. And that is Chainsaw Alice in Wonderland. I bought that book. I bought, I bought this. Because I couldn't find, on some of these books, I couldn't find a cover big enough to put up here. And I don't like stretching them because they get, you know, distorted. So I had to buy some of them on Kindle and then do, did the whole uh, screenshot and snip and sketch or snip, snip or whatever to be able to use them. All right, number nine. Now, the cover for number nine is from the audio book. It says Four Tales of Horror or erotic horror or whatever. There's actually 22 uh, stories in this. But number nine is I Shudder at Your Touch. And this is edited by Michelle Slung. And this is one of the older anthologies, all right? And it just says here, a sensational anthology of sex, horror, and the supernatural from 21 best-selling authors such as Stephen King, Clive Barker, Ruth Rendell, Stephen, R., Stephen J. Donaldson, Patrick McGrath, and more. And it says 21 authors, so I'm figuring one of them wrote two stories, but it says, cause it says on the original cover, uh, 22 uh, stories or tales. So Anyway, that was I Shudder at Your Touch, uh, edited by Michelle Slung and all those authors, or with all those authors, all right? Alright, number 10, last but not least from Christine Morgan, we have got Sperm Jackers from Hell. That's, that is just a screwed up title in the first place, alright? Let's summon a succubus, they said. It'll be fun, they said. I have some friends and we had a crazy idea. Let's summon a demon. Not just any demon, but a sexy devil chick that will do anything we want, even butt stuff. It'll be easy. It's not like it's going to work. Monsters aren't real. We were wrong. Really fucking wrong. The demon is not what we thought and it's making horrible things happen. People are cutting into each other's junk. Some guy is fucking his dog. And sex slugs, slugs from hell are raping us and stealing our semen in order to build a goddamn hive. We didn't mean for any of this, but we're going to fix it just after a few more beers and bong hits. From Christine Morgan, author of Mythic Lust, The Minotaur, and The Raven's Table, Viking Stories, comes a sleazy and deviant satire about sex, occultism, and nerd culture. And that is Sperm Jackers from Hell by Christine Morgan. And that is the end of this video. Like I said, if you are easily offended, this may not be the video for you. So those of you who are early, easily offended, you're not hearing a word I'm saying right now because you have already left the channel. Uh, and those of you who stuck around, thank you for sticking around. And uh, until next time, um, take care and stay scared. Bye-bye.